YouTube, Apple just released the brand new M2 Pro and M2 Max version of the MacBook Pros. We have the 14 inch and the 16 inch, and now you have a decision to make. Which size do you choose? And do not pick the wrong size MacBook Pro. I'm gonna help you make your decision a little bit easier considering I have experience with both models, as you can see. So let's get to the obvious. Obviously, there's a physical difference in weight and sizing, and that might be the deciding factor for you. If we take a look on the comparison on Apple's website for technical specs, we get a 3.5 pound weight with the 14 inch, as well as a 4.7 pound weight with the 16 inch. So there is a bit more heft with the 16 inch. Now, the 14 inch is no slack neither, as it's a hefty boy as well. These are pro machines packing pro internals with pro deliverables, and that comes at a price of weight. So if you're someone who are looking for this device as a more portable device that you're gonna go out and use, there's a couple things to consider. Do you mind the sizing? Do you mind the weight? And how much screen real estate do you actually want? Because if you're using this in a portable sense, the bigger screen for some users, if that's you, is probably gonna serve you a bit better. As well as with the larger sizing, you do get better thermals, but we'll get more into that in just a bit. Now, the 14 inch is like that sweet spot of, I don't want something too big to lug around as well as not as heavy. And the 14 inch just delivers in that right, as well as packing a punch and punching well above its weight and size class for sure. Whether you go M2 Pro or M2 Max, the 14 inch is a delightful experience. Now me personally, I picked the M1 Max 14 inch build on the previous generation. After using this for well over a year now and having it stationed, for the majority of that year, considering like the way everything kind of slowed down and so forth. I kind of wish that I went 16 inch for that extra screen real estate, considering I use my laptop screen even while it's docked, as well as the thermos. But let me be extremely clear. This M1 Max inside of this 14 inch chassis has not slacked in none the least. This is the best MacBook Pro that I've ever used to date. So I don't care if you go 16 inch or 14 inch, don't get caught up in the whole thermal propaganda that runs rampant on YouTube as usual, oh, it's overheating in the thermals. Every laptop chassis, if you put a high performance chip within it, it's gonna have to throttle at some point to save and protect that chip. Throttling is good for your system. It is protecting your investment. Think of it that way. So when you see the temps, especially with the M2 Max, it has a higher power draw. It's gonna run a bit hotter. Same thing with the M2 Pro, but essentially keep this in mind. You will be fine no matter which one you go with. Now, screen sizing. As you guys can see with the 14 inch, you get 3024 by 1964 pixels versus the 16 inch display, which you get 3456 by 2234. At the end of the day, essentially, screen real estate is the only deciding factor I feel like in between these two displays. They both have the same nits, they both have ProMotion, they both have everything that you would look for in this generation of MacBook Pro. So the only deciding factor between these two devices when it comes to screen is how big do you want your display to be? Do you need more screen real estate? I like to use my laptop uh, displays at native resolution, which means I go to the max amount of screen real estate that I can get out of them, which makes things a lot smaller. But I also like to accompany my laptops when in the studio with an external larger display so that I can see a little bit better and using that as a secondary display. Just think about it. What size display do you truly want? And let that help guide you into which one you want to pick. Now, I was talking about thermals earlier and a lot of people are going to be wondering about performance. Now, this is a category in between the 14 inch and 16 inch that gets a bit like, do I want the 16 inch? Because, hey, it has better thermals and essentially is going to have a better extended amount of performance over time. But in all reality, when I get the 14 inch, those, you know, quoted thermals and so forth, in real world usage, is it actually gonna hinder me? As someone who had the 14 inch chassis with the higher end max chip, I'm talking about the higher end, like the top GPU cores, and I drive this machine crazy, I'm just gonna tell you like this, from an everyday user perspective, even when doing pro tasks, you can do a 14 inch chassis and have a pleasurable experience just as much as you would with the 16 inch. Now again, better thermos is gonna yield a slightly better performance over time with the 16 inch, as you will see in some of these tests that I'm gonna show you guys, because there is a difference between the 14 inch and 16 inch base models, and essentially this is what's at play. 
The 14 inch base model comes with the Bend 10 core CPU chip versus the 16 inch, which comes with the full M2 Pro 12 core chip. So let me explain what a Bend chip is real quick and as basic as possible. Basically the M2 Pro is intended to be a 12 core CPU with 19 core GPU and it has a certain benchmark of performance and standards to hit. The manufacturing of CPU chips is not perfection. And when that chip that is manufactured does not hit those benchmarks and those standards, then they will create a bend version. They will disable two cores, disable a couple more cores on the GPU and sell it for a discount because it was unable to reach the standards and the benchmarks necessary in order for it to be sold at that 12 core, 19 core M2 Pro setup. So that's what you get with a bend chip. It's gonna have a bit less more performance and CPU in the benchmarks. It's not by that much, but you really see the edge in the full M2 Pro when you look at the multi-core scores. So if you look right here on the single core scores, the 14 inch with the bend chip 1908 versus the 16 inch with the full chip at 1935. Single core scores, not too much of a difference. But when you get into the multi-core, that's where you see the difference of a full M2 Pro versus the Bend. The Bend chip comes in at 11.359 versus the unbend M2 Pro chip coming in at 14.576. So as you guys can see, this is where the difference is significant amongst these two chips. Now, there's gonna be a lot of uh, talk around SSD speeds. Again, you know what's hilarious to me is that even if an SSD is only ranking in 2,000 gigabits or whatever it is per second in comparison to the 3,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 or whatever that the higher SSDs offer, you know, I don't think that's as much of the issue as what size you're actually choosing and the longevity of that due to the TBW, which is terabytes written over time. The larger SSDs is going to yield a higher TBW and they're also gonna give you a higher speed. So if you're just a performance nut, I don't understand why you would be even looking at the lower SSD options at all. Like, I don't understand why anyone who requires high performance would build an inferior machine. So again, SSD speeds between the 14 inch um, base versus the 16 inch base, it's just slight and minute. But then when you start putting in larger uh, SSD options, in your build, you're gonna get faster results and better results. And it's just gonna feel and fly so much more fluent for high performance tasks than if you restrict yourself. Okay, so we got performance out the way. We talked about the physical dimensions and we talked about like, you know, typically everyday use between these two devices being, you know, not so much the determining factor. The next factor is gonna be pricing. What is the pricing and the setups and the bills between the two devices that may lean or push your decision in one or the other direction? Now, when we get into the 14 inch setup over here, you guys are gonna see that you can get that bin chip at a discount at 199. But when you get the full M2 Pro chip, which comes in at 2499, and then you look at the 16 inch base model with the full chip, it's 2499. So essentially, at the full M2 Pro chipset, there's no difference in pricing. Except for the fact that on the 14 inch, you do get a one terabyte internal SSD versus the 512 on the base model is 16 inch. So there is a difference in pricing per storage cost. Now, when we look at the one terabyte version of the 16 inch, you're gonna see that that price jumps up to the 2699. So essentially the difference between the full M2 Pro build of the 14 inch and the 16 inch is $200. Now the Ben chip is the discounted build on the 14 inch. So if you are budget conscious and your pocket is not stretching, but you're trying to get in at the end of the day, you know, your options are very limited and you're probably going to look at this 14 inch, 10 core, 16 core M2 Pro. Now for everyone else, we have a decision to make. 14 inch, one terabyte, 16 gigabytes of unified memory. Me personally, I always think if you're doing a more demanding pro task, you need to raise your unified memory. So 32 gigs right off the bat, boom. Now, I like to edit off of internal storage. 
If you do as well, I would recommend a higher internal storage build. I get it. Everyone is all about the cheaper external storage options, which I am as well. I talked about in my previous video, this OWC mini stacks, which I love, which gives you a M.2 SSD slot, as well as a 3.5 inch hard drive slot. And it's Thunderbolt 4 and it has the Thunderbolt 4 hub on the rear. So I'm expanding my Thunderbolt 4 ports. I'm also giving myself two storage options, one slower and one extremely fast. And I can go from editing and working on the extremely fast to storing on the larger, slower, you know, traditional drive. But in the case of me wanting to edit on my super fast internal SSD storage, you should make it larger. You're going to get quicker speeds internally and you're also going to have room before you're maxing out your internal hard drives which you don't want to do because it's not healthy so i would raise that now on this build right here with me not expanding my m2 pro into the m2 max setup i'm already at 32.99 with a two terabyte ssd now if i pull up to the 16 inch and build a similar build we go to 32 right here and then i put this up i go to 34.99 versus 3299. So no matter what changes you make when upgrading with the full M2 Pro chip in between the 14 inch and the 16 inch, the price difference is $200. And that's basically it. If you want a 14 inch, it's $200 cheaper. If you want a 16 inch, you're going to spend $200 more no matter how you build it. So with that all being said, from an everyday user's perspective of experiencing the 14 inch MacBook Pros with these new silicon builds, as well as the 16 inch MacBook Pros with these new Apple Silicon chips, it's up to you. It's literally up to you. Even when it comes to performance, efficiency, battery life, and all of those above, battery life has been increased and improved this year because what did Apple do? They gave you more efficiency cores as opposed to performance cores. So essentially, yes, we're getting more performance to a degree, but we're also getting more efficiency. So that's something also to consider. And again, I'm not appalled to the idea of getting the M1 Pro or the M1 Max at a discount, because again, who's complaining that owned a M1 Pro or M1 Max device unless they built it wrong for their use cases? No one is. So pick and choose what you want. But again, when it comes to the argument of 14 inch versus 16 inch, it's absolutely user preference. That's it. Man, I ain't called Tim Apple in a minute, though. Hold up. Hello, Tim Apple. What up, player? I know I haven't been calling y'all. I've been letting you breathe over there because, you know, 2022, whew, what a year. Hey, keep applying the pressure because I don't know what the competition is about to do. Now, again, how is it that I didn't get any MacBooks or Mac Minis or Apple products, for that matter, sent to me? Hello? Hello? How, how rude, Tim Apple. 